Okay, so whenever you're building an SEO strategy, the first thing you wanna do is actually go and look at the existing keywords. That's always the best place to start. So what you'll do is just go to Ahrefs or you can use SEMrush, it doesn't make a difference. Throw the site into the site explorer here in Ahrefs. And then what I wanna do is, knowing that Gordon Ramsay has a ton of branded searches, which is where we should focus first, I went ahead and I put from position two. So I only wanna look at keywords that he's not currently ranking number one for. And then I also only wanna look at those branded keywords. So what I did here is I went to contains, phrase match, and Gordon Ramsay, okay? And so what you can do is you actually sort by position and we can see what he's currently ranking well for, for his brand. And we want to attack these keywords first because these are gonna be the easiest to rank for because when it's a branded query, it's a million times easier to rank for than a non-branded query. So this is always the best place to start. So if you're ever working with a brand that has branded searches, always start here. And you can of course sort it by position and kind of go from there, or you can sort it by, and sort it by volume and look at the ones that are really performing not so great, right? So we look at here, Gordon Ramsay Burger, we see that they're ranking about number five. We should try to push this up to number one or at least in the top three, and then just go through all of these and prioritize them based on what's most important, right? And some of these are not gonna be relevant. Gordon Ramsay's age, daughter, those are things that he's not gonna wanna include on his site, but anything that could potentially drive leads or drive customers to any of his restaurants or his academy or whatever else he's selling, that is something worth pursuing. So that's the first thing is focus on those branded keywords first. Then after that, what we wanna do is we actually wanna refine these filters a little bit more so we can just look at keywords that do not include his brand. So what I like to do is I'll do from 100 on volume. So just to eliminate keywords that are not super high volume. And then we're gonna do 230 on the keyword difficulty. And then lastly, we're gonna go back over here and we're actually gonna do doesn't contain Gordon Ramsay. And so what this will do is it will remove all of the branded keywords from this data set. And then we're just gonna see the keywords that he's not currently ranking for that are non-branded. So right away we can see, and this is sorted by volume, so we can see some really great ideas right away. And I'm gonna show you how to optimize for these. I'm gonna show you how he can improve these pages even further. But ice cream sandwich, and we can see sea bass, beef ribs. These things are all good, but what I like to do is actually like to add modifiers to make these even more relevant and ultimately to improve the intent of the keyword. So what I would do in this case, I go over here and I do another rule and I do contains. And in this case, I would do recipe. This is just knowing that most of the stuff on his site are gonna be pertaining to recipes. And so we can see here now is we can see all these different really hyper-focused keywords with exceptionally targeted intent that we can go after. So I wouldn't wanna rank for just jerk chicken. I'd actually wanna to try to rank for jerk chicken recipe, okay? It's much better to try to rank for the full phrase because the intent is much more clear, right? Someone searching jerk chicken, yeah, they might be searching for recipes, but they may also just searching for like, what is jerk chicken? Like they may not even know what it is, right? So we wanna make sure that that intent is really clear. So this is one way to do that and kind of focus in on these keywords that are gonna be really easy for someone like him with his authority to be able to rank, okay? So next thing I wanna do is we actually wanna do a keyword gap analysis. So we can actually go into the competing domain section here and you can look at all the sites that are ranking for similar keywords. Now you may have to go through and find which ones are relevant, which ones aren't, but I found one here that was for this website, Chef Savvy. And I ran it through here in the content gap and immediately I found all kinds of ideas that Gordon Ramsay is not currently, doesn't have any pages that are ranking well for. So, you know, one right here, fried rice recipe, there's no reason that Gordon Ramsay couldn't create a dedicated page for fried rice recipe. I'm, I, I am 100% positive that he knows how to create amazing fried rice recipes. Bruschetta recipe, these are the things that I'd be trying to rank for, how to make fried rice. There's all kinds of amazing ideas in here that he could easily create, you know, show his own recipe, show the steps to making that, and then he could capture these rankings because this competitor who is ranking is not even close to the authority that Gordon Ramsay has, even from a website perspective and even from just the overall authority as a brand. So easy, easy opportunities to steal some really high quality keywords for his brand right here. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is you actually wanna start looking at some of these keywords that we wanna improve performance for on the branded front. So one of them that I found is lobster ravioli recipe Gordon Ramsay. And so when you look at this in Google, you're gonna see a few things. First, 
he dominates the search results for this from using different websites. So his masterclass, he actually talks about this recipe. He has a bunch of videos that show how to do this. And there's even some sites that are talking about his recipe. But with that said, we want to own these searches. So he should create a dedicated page about this lobster ravioli recipe and, and push that up the SERPs. It would be much better for him to be ranking above these sites than it would be for food and travel to be ranking because food and travel may not drive a direct conversion. It's much easier for him to drive direct conversions on his own website. Now, with that said, one thing you can do too is when you do conduct a search like this, always take note of the people also ask. Tons of opportunities here to increase the topical authority around this concept of creating lobster ravioli, right? We want Gordon Ramsay to become the authority on this idea and topic of lobster ravioli. So you need to absolutely attack these and use these as inspiration to make a, a piece of content even deeper or create a new content asset to ultimately build that topical authority even further. So that's the first one. Okay, so here's another keyword, which is Gordon Ramsay Brussels sprouts. This is another one that we need to attack, but here's where it gets interesting. When we actually look for his domain and we see what's ranking, we see that he's actually ranking with a Christmas recipes page. This page will never rank for this Brussels sprouts query, okay? It just won't rank, it's not relevant enough. And so he's literally just ranking because of his overall site authority, but this will never get to the first page. So what he has to do is create a dedicated page to be able to rank for this. It seems very simplistic, but this is an example of uh, intent mismatch. So he's purely ranking for the site authority, but he'll never actually achieve those number one rankings or even first page, rank first page rankings without having a dedicated page. And then one last example, which is cauliflower steak Gordon Ramsay, another branded keyword that he can easily rank for. But if we go and search for his site, we'll see that he's actually ranking number 46. And the reason he's ranking so low is because this page is not focused enough for him to actually rank. This is not the way to do it. And the reason he's not ranking well is just because this page is not relevant enough to rank. So we need to create a dedicated page around this keyword. So now it's time to look at some non-branded keywords. And the first one is jerk chicken recipe. And so I went ahead and ran his target page through Surfer. And we can see that it's not performing exceptionally well. In fact, it's not even in the top 100. So before we even look into Surfer, we just need to see if this page even has good general optimization. So let's take a look. So first thing I wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the detailed Chrome extension. And we wanna make sure that this is actually optimized and we have that the critical keyword in the most important spots. So in this case, jerk chicken recipe is in the title, so he's done that well. And then we wanna make sure that there's actually jerk chicken recipe in the meta description as well. Now, he does split up jerk chicken and recipe here, but I'm, you know, maybe I'm a little OCD, but I like to have the exact keyword phrase in the meta description, just, just so I know I've covered all my bases. So then we'll look at the URL structure. He does have a recipes folder and then he has jerk chicken. So this will definitely work. And then looking through here, we wanna look at some other things like the headings. So we'll look at the headings and we'll see a, a very glaring problem here, which is there is no H1 tag, okay? Every page needs to have an H1 tag. That's the most critical heading tag that you need to have on the page. And so we need to put an H1 above the fold. So I would change this here to an H1. And then if we go ahead and do an inspect element, we'll go ahead and see here. And what I would do is I would actually change this. So we change this to an H1. And then what we would do is we change this to jerk chicken recipe. And this is what we want, okay? We wanna have a strong H1 with the exact keyword phrase in the H1. This is absolutely critical, okay? And then on top of that, what we wanna do is we wanna look at this page and we also wanna include this primary keyword in the first sentence. So when we look at this, we'll go ahead and take a look if this is even mentioned anymore, and it's not. It's only mentioned in the first heading, and then outside of here, it's not mentioned at all, okay? So I would have a little sentence, maybe even below here, that says something about the jerk chicken recipe, okay? Just to include that core keyword in there one more time. So th that's kind of like bare minimum on-page SEO. Now, of course, we should include it in another H2. We can include it, uh, sprinkle a few times in the, in the copy, and then maybe even the last sentence but that's kind of the core areas that we need to get it in. Now, after you've done that, what we wanna do is we actually wanna to go to Surfer and see where else we can make improvements. So we'll go ahead and look at the audit here, and we just wanna see what can we do to make this page even more relevant so that it can perform better on Google. So before you even look at true density, just skip right past that and go to the word count, okay? Is this page 
content rich enough to rank relative to the competitors, okay? And so relative to these competitors, this is not gonna be sufficient. We need to get to at least 1300 words to probably perform decently for this keyword. And so there needs to be a lot more meat on this content. So that's the first thing is we need to get the word count in order before we even think about optimizing for NLP. Now we'll go down here and the next thing I wanna look at is just the overall user experience, okay? So right here we wanna see, does this page actually load quickly? And it looks like it loads pretty quickly. And in the load time here, it's actually pretty similar to all the competitors, okay? So there is some room for improvement here, but ultimately you're splitting hairs. It's not gonna cause much of a, a performance gain. So we wanna get a really strong word count. We wanna have the user experience strong. And then we're gonna go up here and then we're gonna look at the NLP once we've hit the word count, okay? And then we're just gonna use, and if you're, if you're low on word count, use these as opportunities to make that content deeper. Take these as little topics to make that content much more rich. So a lot of room to improve on this page. And this, this page could definitely improve performance very, very fast, which is doing basic on-page SEO and then using Surfer to optimize. I guarantee that will improve the performance very, very quickly. Okay, then one more we're gonna look at here is just steak sandwich recipe. So when we go down here, we'll go and see, once again, he's not ranking in the top 100. But when we go back to the page, we're gonna see a lot of the similar issues. And this is gonna apply across all the recipe pages. And it's amazing, just making these small little tweaks make a huge difference on your SEO performance. I mean, something as simple as just not including recipe in the H1 can be very problematic for your performance. So go back and look here. Once again, this one actually doesn't say steak sandwiches recipe in the exact order. So I would actually refine this title and make it steak sandwiches recipe. And then you could also have just Gordon Ramsay. You could just eliminate this part altogether. Just move this over here and front load the primary keyword. This one is, doesn't even have a meta description. So we would need to write a meta description. And then once again, the URL structure is sufficient. And then we'll go to headings and we have the same issue as the previous one, which is there's no H1 tag. So we need to create an H1 tag and then we need to put recipes in here, steak sandwich recipes or steak sandwiches recipe, whatever it may be. And so the basic optimization here is just not being done. So this, these concepts can be applied across all of these pages because you're gonna see very similar problems across all the pages. Now, then we go into Surfer and we can see, we'll go to audit and we can take a look and see that there's, once again, huge gaps that can be made up. So right here in the word count, word count is not sufficient to rank. I mean, there are some lower word counts in this one, but still, we should probably aim for that at about 1,100 words to make this content as rich as possible, okay? Very important. Go back down, loading speed is not actually great on this page relative to the competitors. So one thing to remember is that every keyword is its own battle. So you may be sufficient in one keyword, but you may be in a deficit in another. And in this case, he's actually not doing well from a loading speed perspective relative to the competitors for this specific keyword. Okay, that's very important. It's a very important distinction. So in this case, we know that this page needs to load much faster if we wanna be able to compete. Okay, so that's important. So increase word count, increase loading speed of that page, and then of course go up here and optimize for the natural language processing, which is NLP, okay? Which really, if we just eliminate the geeky language, it just means relevant keywords, okay? We're just optimizing for other relevant keywords, which allows you to attract more long tail traffic and ultimately make your page more relevant. That's all we're trying to do. Okay, so once we've got the keyword research squared away, we've got the on-page SEO strategy all squared away, then the next thing we need to do is we need to look at the overall link gaps between us and the competitors on an individual keyword basis. So just a little example here, which is jerk chicken recipe, ran this through the keyword explorer, and right away we can see it's a relatively competitive keyword. We're looking at a KD of 30, so that means we're gonna need roughly 36 referring domains to be able to rank for this, okay, high quality sites. Now, Gordon Ramsay's site is pretty strong, so he may not need as many referring domains, but still, we still need to take a look at how his page compares relative to the competition. So when we look at this, we'll go ahead and see. The first thing I wanna see is, how does Gordon Ramsay's overall DR compare to the competitors? So we'll go ahead and take a look at his site and we'll see that he has a DR of 72, okay? So he's a very strong website, which means right away we can see that there's a DR63 ranking, there's a DR54 ranking, and there's a DR38 ranking, 
So we know that with just his overall site authority, we should be able to break in to this top 10, no doubt about it. Now, next thing I wanna see is what is the link gap on the page level? So when you look at domains, you can see how many referring domains we're gonna to need to be able to rank for this. So what I like to see is just some low numbers in here. So we see you know, six and nine and 13, that's a good sign, right? But then we have this one at the top here that's ranking with 255 referring domains. So that's a, that is a lot of referring domains going to one page. So that won't be easy to push them out of that number one result, but we can definitely push a lot of these weaker results out of here. So when we look at Gordon Ramsay's page though, we'll see he really only has about seven referring domains. And if we look at the performance of this page, you'll see that the link growth, did. he did have a little bit of link growth, but then it got flat and it actually started to decrease. So whenever you see a decrease in total referring domains going to a page, that is not a good sign. It's like if one point your, your particular product was getting a bunch of votes and a bunch of sales and those sales started to fall off, we can assume that that product is no good anymore. And it's the same with the, the content that we create. If we're no longer getting votes for a page, Google is just going to perceive that page as no longer being super valuable. So that's why you need to have consistent link growth over time. This needs to be to continually grow. You do not want to be in a deficit. Otherwise, you'll get results like this where it just starts to slowly fall. And if you look at the trajectory of this, this page, it's only going to get worse. Eventually, it's just going to bottom out completely and then have to rebuild the page and, and get it back up. So this is very, very, a very important concept to understand. And this is gonna be the case for any page that's not performing super well. So the good news is that if you do the on-page on SEO actions that I explained, and then you also narrow the link gaps on these pages, these pages are gonna shoot up the rankings very quickly. Now, there are other things we can do too. We can, we can continue to create more content to support these keywords. So what I like to do right away is if I want to build more topical authority, just immediately take the keyword, put it into Google and see if there's a people also ask. Okay. Right, right away. We can see if people also ask, and then we can go to SEO minion and we can just run this little audit here. And this will give us all of these examples for people also ask, and it will copy it for us. Okay. And then we can see all these different ideas that we can attack to build more topical authority around this, this concept or this topic of steak sandwich recipes. Okay, so at this point, we've done keyword research, we've we tackled the on-page SEO issues, and we know that there are some pretty severe link gaps that we need to narrow on the page level for many of these important pages. But now we need to get into the kind of technical side of this site. And there's kind of a lot of stuff to digest here, a lot of things that need to be improved. And so I'm gonna dive into a couple of these just so you can see. So first thing that, that really, you know, kind of stood out to me was just that there's some major structural issues. And so what you're looking at here, this is a crawl that I ran with Screaming Frog, okay? And when you look at all these highlights, you're gonna see this all makes sense here in a second. So let's just start with this little column here, and I'm just gonna filter by the color. And so a couple things I highlighted. First thing is we have these category pages that are really just paginated pages, okay? So you can see up here in the start 16, this just means that these are paginated pages. And there's nothing wrong with paginated pages, but the problem is when they don't have a canonical tag or you're not using a no index tag. So when we look at this, we'll go to the detailed Chrome extension and you'll see that we have the URL here, but there's no canonical tag. So if this was set up correctly, there would be a canonical tag on this paginated page that goes to the, the main category page here, which is this, okay? So if we go and look at this, this is the primary category page that we wanna rank for beef and steak recipes, okay? This is the page that we want Google to index, and this is the page that we want to rank for these keywords. Now, we don't wanna rank one of these paginated pages when we keep loading, okay? We don't want the URL structure to change. So all you have to do is just put a rel canonical tag on this particular page, on the paginated page, and that will tell Google, instruct it, that this is the preferred version of this URL, okay? It's a very simple tweak, but it makes a big difference. Now, the other one is just the overall URL structure. So when you look at this, I'll go ahead and zoom in so we can see a little bit better. But this URL structure is not ideal. This is not a best practice. I mean, we need to have these split up so Google knows that this isn't all just one keyword, okay? So 4th of July, triffle, okay? I don't know what that is, but this is, this is the way that our URL structure should be. So if you look across the board on all the URLs on the site, you're gonna see that same issue where it's just kind of combined into one word. And it's a very simple fix, 
but it makes a big difference because now Google will know, oh, okay, these are separate words. And we have to treat Google like a child. We don't want any ambiguity. There should be no ambiguity on these, these pages. Now, the next one is just out, out of date categories. I would never use a year in any category because you just know next year it's gonna get outdated, then you're gonna have to do a 301 redirect to the new year. So keep your categories evergreen. Don't include time dependent variables in there. So that's the first thing that we looked at there. Now, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And now let's look at some other things here. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other some other challenges. And I'll start with the title tags, okay? And this is where things get pretty interesting. Now, let's take a look at what I highlighted. So what you're gonna see here is these, these are not gonna be sufficient title tags to really perform in the best way possible, okay? So looking at this, we have a couple of issues. So right here, honey glazed ham, all right? Nothing inherently wrong with just saying honey glazed ham, but this structure is not gonna be sufficient for ranking. So what we wanna do is we wanna move recipes over here. So honey glazed ham recipes or recipe singular, that's okay. But then what we wanna do is we wanna make that title a little more interesting so that it generates more clicks, but also add some variations and some title modifiers to it to improve the clickability, but also increase the amount of long tail traffic going to it. So we'll look at this and you'll see, I just created a very simple title tag here with some variations. So for example, we, it'll, we'll do a little example here. We'll take this one out. So if we did, we just picked one of these. So we'll just take one of these out. We'll do, we'll just do fast for this example. So fast honey glazed ham recipe by Gordon Ramsay, 2023. Okay, this is a much more click worthy title than this when we compare. Okay, this is going to generate more clicks than this because this is has is using some language in here to, you know, because people love things that are fast and easy and new. So you'll see all these are these are intentional picks here because these are ones that we often use in our title tags. Using a year is really important too because it means that it's current. So if it's current, people wanna click on it. So these are very simple things that you can do to improve the performance of these pages just by modifying the title. We're not talking like monumental changes here. These are little micro changes that can have a huge, huge impact. And this is the case across the board. I mean, we see it with the egg recipes. We see it with the dessert recipes. So there's just a lot of redundancies in these title tags. I mean, we have, you know, we're saying Gordon Ramsay multiple times on title tag. That's not necessary. Uh, but it is important to make sure that we say buy Gordon Ramsay because that adds more credibility and people want to click it because he's a well-known person in his industry. So people are much more likely to click if it's Gordon Ramsay versus Joe Schmo, who no one knows, right? So we want to include that in the title tag. So once again, very simple changes, but make a very big difference. Okay, now I wanna draw your attention to two very important columns in this crawl, which is crawl depth and unique in links. So crawl depth just means how many clicks does it take to get to this page on the website? So looking at this, we have several pages that are pretty deep into the architecture, not horrible, but definitely some room to improve. And I'll show you how we'll be able to prove that and improve that in a second. But then we'll go to unique in links, and this is, the amount of internal links that are going to these pages, okay? And so we want to make sure that we have enough internal link coverage to show Google that these pages are important, okay? It's very important. Now, there's a very easy solution to this problem. All we have to do is on these recipe pages, we just need to go down here and have a little block that links to other relevant recipes. So, you know, maybe three to five different recipes that are super relevant and just have a nice little block here and that's gonna drive tons of internal link coverage to these pages. And so an example here is if we go to, to the Food Network, you'll see that they do a very good job of internal linking. They have a little sidebar that links to other relevant articles and pages. And then we go down here and once again, they have a nice little block here that shows other recipes that are very similar. So this is really important because it will drive tons of internal link coverage, be able to grow the authority of these existing pages. And overall, it's gonna make the site much more crawlable and indexable.